Hey everyone, Mike from Just Watch back with another video. Not a review today. Instead, what we're going to talk about are some of the really cool offerings coming out of Basel World. Uh, if you guys don't know what Basel World is, it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, watch and jewelry shows. It uh, takes place every year over in Switzerland. It's the show where the majority of the larger uh, watch manufacturers release their new collections for 2018. And some of the things that I'm seeing on the blogs and the websites uh, coming out of that show are really exciting. So I picked five watches that I wanted to talk about today and uh, get your guys' feedback and opinions on too in the comments below. So please do join us below in the comments. Let us know what you think on these five uh, pieces that I have picked out from Buzzle World. So let's get it started. First one from Seiko. Uh, Seiko, just like they did last year, they, they really set the world on fire, the dive watch world on fire last year at Basel World with the issue of the SLA-17 62 Maz reissue, and they're doing it again with the SLA-25 reissue. Uh, what this watch is, it's a reissue of their 6159-7000 series watch, which, which was released in the late 1960s. Uh, if that watch doesn't sound familiar, it is a, a monoblock construction, so it's a single piece case uh, where it's just everything goes in through the front of the watch instead of the back. And it's their first 300 meter dive watch, or Seiko's first 300 meter dive watch that they made. Uh, it is the watch that the Marine Master series of watches are all based on. And what they did, uh, what Seiko did, is they did a really uh, significant watch here where they were very faithful to the original 6159 and uh, in the dial, uh, it's just, a, I think they knocked it out of the park and we'll show you what the dial looks like here. Uh, they stayed very true to form uh, also in uh, the dimensions. It's a, it's a watch with a high beat movement. Uh, so it's, it's beating along at 36,000 vibrations per hour. Uh, it's a big boy. It's a 44.8 millimeter diameter by 15.7 millimeter height. They don't list a length on the lugs, but I'm going to guess it's around a 49 or 50 or maybe even 51 millimeter a lug to lug on this. It's a stainless steel case, of course, with a super hard coating, a unidirectional bezel, really cool looking bezel. I love the, everything about the case on this watch. And of course, a dual curved sapphire crystal with AR a screw down crown. And as we mentioned, um, the 36,000 B per hour uh, it's a caliber 8L55 uh, in-house Seiko movement, self-winding, of course. Uh, beats along at 5 hertz uh, with a 55-hour power reserve at 37 joules. So a lot of movement under the hood on this bad boy. Really looking forward to seeing this. It does only come with one strap auction, uh, option, not auction. It comes with the black silicone strap. Uh, like I said, this SLA-25, it's very faithful to the original 6159 series watches. If you guys go on eBay, and if there's one available, uh, they're not always available on eBay, but if there are, I've seen them $10,000, $20,000 and more in good condition. So these are watches that command a very high price on the collector's market, the original 6159. So the price point on this reissue, this SLA-25, it's 5,500 euros, which is just under 7,000 US dollars. Once again, that's full price point. So I'm guessing that it's going to be available from dealers, uh, you know, a little bit under there. At least I hope it will if there's available. It's going to be a very limited run to only 1,500 pieces worldwide available. So looks like Seiko is going to have another big hit on their hands with this watch. So I really like what they did with the dial, how they stayed faithful to the 6159 uh, original. Uh, that black with the gold and the stainless, uh, just really nice looking watch. So great job, Seiko. Really looking forward to seeing this watch. Uh, second watch we're going to talk about is quite the statement piece from Seiko. This is There's only two Seikos we're talking about. Uh, but what they did with this one is a 53,000 US dollar. Yes, that's 53,000 with three zeros after the 53 uh, Grand Seiko. The reason it's so expensive is they chose... Uh, a platinum case for this watch. So what this watch is, it's the 20th anniversary of their uh, 9S caliber movement, which was originally released in 1998. It was actually coincidentally uh, the 30 year uh, anniversary piece of the Grand Seiko um, 
So kind of a cool, they've designated it the VFA for very fine adjusted, and they're saying it's gonna run at a plus five minus three seconds per day standard. Uh, so quite the impressive watch, a gorgeous dial, really interesting dial treatment. Now I'll, I'll put in a macro photo here so you guys can see uh, what they did with the texture on this dial. It's almost at a distance similar to like a snowflake dial, but up close, it's quite a bit different. It's, a, it's kind of a classic um, Seiko, uh, Grand Seiko uh, case shape, and it's coming on a black alligator strap, of course, with a deployment uh, clasp. Um, let's see if we can get you some uh, numbers on this bad boy. Okay, so just like the SLA 25, this is also running at 36,000 vibrations per hour. Um, it's the 50th anniversary, as I said, of the Grand Seiko. Uh, it pays homage to the original high beat automatic with the spiral pattern that incorporates both the letters of the Grand Seiko logo, as well as the mark used to designated watches by Dainai Shikosha. Pardon me if I slaughtered that name. I hope I didn't. Dainai? Dainai Shikosha, I think is what it is. The Seiko division that created the first high beat watches back in the late 60s. Uh, so size on this watches. So the reference number is going to be S. BGH265. It's going to come in at a 39.5 millimeter case diameter uh, with a 13 millimeter thickness, so not super thick at all. It is going to be a platinum 950 case throughout with Zeratsu polishing. So I'm imagining that the case on this watch is going to be incredibly impressive. Uh, it's going to have applied and diamond polish index markers, uh, water resistance to 100 meters, and like I said, crocodile and platinum folding clasp uh, for bracelet. Uh, so the, the caliber movement, the 9S85 caliber movement, uh, it is hours, minutes, seconds, and dates, so pretty straightforward there. Uh, the diameter on the caliber on the movement is a 28.4 millimeter diameter, 55 hour power reserve, uh, automatic winding, of course, the same five hertz, 36,000 vibrations per hour, uh, 37 joules. So it sounds like it's a it's a movement very uh, close to what's in the SLA 25. I'm guessing it's not uh, the, the SLA 25 movement is not as decorated though, and it is going to be chronometer certified uh, movement. So it'll be like a six position a certification, something like that. Uh, suggested retail on this bad boy is fifty three thousand dollars. So <laughs> quite the statement piece from from Seiko on this one. Uh, the next piece that I wanted to talk about. It's kind of a cool watch, and it's from Oris. Uh, what it is here, and it, it's it's a smaller piece. And I think what we're seeing here uh, with this show, especially, is I think we're starting to see a movement away from the giant oversized watch thing. So you know, over the last few years, you were seeing 44, 45, 46, even bigger uh, watch diameters. I think we're going to start seeing that go a little bit the other way. And what Seiko did, or what Oris did, pardon me. Uh, is they came out with a, a, this new really cool big crown movement uh, in, in bronze. So we're seeing a lot more bronze cased watches, which is cool. And what the idea on this watch is, is that the bronze actually develops a patina all of its own so that every watch will be a little bit different as they age to the, uh, to the wearer. Uh, really cool looking watch. It, it's, uh, it's a big crown with a pointer date. So what you have, you have is a big hand that goes around uh, the outside perimeter of the case, so that the actual uh, date is out in the chapter ring. And that hand points out to it, so it's a four-handed movement. You have your hour, minute, and second hands, along with that hand that points out to uh, the date. So really quite a nice watch. They're offering it, looks like, on a leather strap with a really cool uh, texture going around the bezel. Uh, some really nice clean lines on the lugs and the case sides, and of course that uh, that distinctive Oris big crown. Uh, the machine work on this watch looks exquisite. Really just a nice job by them uh, as far as putting it together. Uh, uh, let's see what else we can see about this watch. So the watch is, uh, as I said, it's a 36 millimeter. Uh, the reference 01754-7749-3167. Let's see, it looks like it's going to be priced at around $2,000. Uh, bronze case, bronze crown, uh, steel case back, sapphire crystal on both sides. So you're going to have a see-through case back, which is nice. 50 meter water resistant, 
Uh, the Oris Caliber 754 movement is based on the Salida SW200-1 automatic, beats along at 4 hertz frequency with a 38 hour power reserve. Uh, additional point or date function with hours, minutes, and seconds on the central axis. Uh, the strap is going to be a naturally tan light brown leather with bronze, so it'll be matching. The bronze buckle will match the case back. And uh, as we said, it's going to be uh, probably around $2,000 somewhere in there for the price point. So really nice looking watch, a little bit different. I really enjoy, uh, it has this really nice uh, green dial to it with a very clean signing, just the Oris at the 12 o'clock and the big crown automatic at the 6. Uh, your Arabic numerals going, Arabic, <laughs> easy for me to say, Arabic numerals going around uh, the outside and then of course your date going out around where the chapter ring will be. So nice job by Oris on this watch. I'm really looking forward to seeing this. And like I said, I think the, that they made this in a 36 millimeter case size is really interesting too. So nice job there. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about, if I can get my iPad to cooperate here, uh, <laughs> pardon me while we're, we're waiting for this to uh, load up. So the next one uh, was the initial talk, uh, lots of talk on this watch initially. But what this is, is uh, the new Rolex GMT Pepsi on a Jubilee bracelet. So kind of a neat price point too on this one. Uh, so this is going to be... Um, the GMT Master, let's see here. Actually, let's scroll down to um, where we have some numbers on this one. Um, the GMT2 two, Master 2 has a rich history dating back to 1954 with a reference 6452, followed up shortly after the legendary 1675. Uh, I guess there's been quite a few references since then and most of them have been wins for Rolex. Um, they introduced the Batman in 2013, and then they followed that up with a white gold GMT with a Pepsi bezel in 2015, which from what, all, by all accounts, this white gold Pepsi bezel version has not been uh, blowing off the sales shelves. So, uh, so this year what they've released is the GMT Master II, reference number 126710, it's a stainless steel, steel travel time watch. Uh, has a blue and red cerachrome bezel. So you get that nice ceramic bezel. Uh, a really nice new Jubilee bracelet exclusive to this watch and a new caliber movement inside. So some really nice things that they're doing here. Uh, it looks like it's gonna have a black dial uh, with some oversized index markers, a little bit oversized compared to what they've been doing. Uh, your typical Cyclops at the three o'clock position for the date. Um, very faithful uh, handset to other uh, GMT movements that they've done in the past with a long sweeping second hand. A red uh, hand that points to the alternate date, the 24 hour date and the, uh, the rotating bezel. I'm not sure if the rotating bezel on this is gonna be 60 clicker or not, unidirectional, or if they're gonna make it similar to what they did on the dive watches. So we'll wait and see for more information. If you guys have more information on this too, please let us know uh, down below uh, what they're doing there. So kind of a neat watch there, uh, the Rolex GMT Pepsi. Really nice second. It looks like this is gonna come in around eight or $9,000 price point. Uh, so neat there too that they're doing that. And the last one that we're gonna talk about is also a GMT watch. Uh, this one from Tudor. So. What they did, uh, they also came out with a Pepsi GMT. And for those that don't know, I'm sure most of you do, and I'm just gonna say it just for, for the heck of it. So Tudor is uh, kind of a, a, a little sister or a little brother company of Rolex. Uh, the same standards uh, as Rolexes are made to uh, at, a, at a lower price point. Something that uh, the owner, the originator of Rolex wanted to offer uh, a long time ago. They wanted to be able to offer Rolex quality under a different brand name, under a different umbrella at a, at a lower price point. So much lower price point, about uh, 60 or 70 percent less than what a Rolex cost, and you're still getting incredible Swiss quality uh, watch. So the new GMT is also a Pepsi bezel. It's based on the Black Bay series, uh, which was introduced last year at Basel World. So you're getting a really cool looking case uh, with a big crown, just like the uh, other uh, Black Bay series. Uh, this new GMT is going to feature uh, uh, a similar handset to what they 
what Rolex did with the GMT, except for they're using Tudor's uh, Snowflake handset. So you're getting uh, the same Snowflake handset, so your hour hand, minute hand, and second hand, and also kind of a Snowflake-inspired pointer hand for that alternate date, too. So the case size on this one is going to be 41 millimeters, so it's going to be the same as the Black Bay. It's going to be an ionet Ionized, anodized, I'm sorry, why I couldn't say that word, anodized aluminum bezel that has a matte finish, uh, kind of an Art Deco inspired font too. I think the, they did a really nice job on the bezel and actually the overall look on this watch too. It looks like it's going to come on a number of different bracelets or straps. Uh, you're going to be able to get it on a stainless bracelet as well as a, a couple of strap options. Uh, it's going to be a 48 directional uh, bi-directional, 48 notch bi-directional uh, bezel so you can track different time zones that offset by 30 minutes which is really cool. So you know you don't always have time zones that change on the hour, sometimes they change on the half hour. So if you're a world traveler that's going to be a really nice feature, a uh, nice kind of a thought process by Tudor in doing that. Uh, it is like I said it is identical to the Black Bay Diver. It is going to uh, feature a COSC certified movement uh, the movement on this one is the MT652, which features a variable inertial balance wheel and also a silicone hairspring. So nice job by them. They're getting the same 70-hour power reserve that the Black Bay has. So really nice job there, as well as the GMT function with that red snowflake hand uh, pointing out that alternate time. Uh, the movement is thicker, but interestingly enough, it has the same case height as the other Black Bays at 14.6 uh, millimeters. So kind of standard there. It looks like uh, they plug this new movement and handset into the existing Black Bay case, uh, which is a nice idea by them. So it cuts costs somewhat on production as they already had these cases, bezels and everything, uh, crystals, everything else that they needed ready to go. Um, this watch is going to be available in June 2018. They're calling it the Black Bay GMT reference number 79830RB. Uh, it looks like it's going to go for around that uh, 3600 US dollar, 3600 to 4000 US dollar, uh, depending on uh, which version you get. Or if it's on the bracelet, it looks like it'll be a few hundred dollars more than that. So, really nice looking piece uh, by Tudor. Uh, really excited about this one. So, my two favorites so far are this SLA25 and this new uh, Tudor GMT. So let me know what you guys think on these watches coming out of Basel World. Love to hear your feedback on uh, what you think. And also everyone, thanks again for uh, the thumbs up, for the comments, for the likes. And if you're not following our content already, uh, please do hit that subscribe button and follow along. We're gonna keep bringing you lots of new content and uh, maybe we'll even do another update from Basel World as these pieces continue, as you know, as these manufacturers continue to uh, introduce their new collection. So lots of really fun stuff coming out of Basel World. All right, everyone, that's it for now. Thanks for joining uh, for this episode, and we will see you next time. All right, everyone, thanks.